Greetings to all of you, my dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends, a warm welcome to all of you, a warm Lenten blessings to all of you. And today we're going to do also more in this Reliving the Passion meditation, more of one episode, but I'm going to bring them on Instead of making two episodes, I'm going to bring them on one because it's not that long and maybe it's more convenient to bring it all together in one piece so that you still can have the complete reliving the passion, the meditation on the suffering and death of Jesus Christ. So we start with uh, part for the Preatorium. Mark 15, verse 1. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests with the elders and scribes and the whole council held a consultation, and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. O oh, my Lord, the dawn of your that day the sky is gray, the roofs of Jerusalem dark in the gray, and the street at your feet is dim. You walk from the high priest's house to the praetorium. Are you tired? Have you slept at all? You eat last night, but that was last night. You prayed last night. An exhausted prayer. And last night you endured a long, melling investigation, you alone, and none beside you to support you. You suffered conventionally gestures of contempt and official rejection. The death sentence, accompanied by degrading games. They did wash your face of their spittle. No, it sticks to you still. To them you are a periage. Perioch, I mean, unclean and blasphemy. Why should they wash you? Why should they feed you? Why should they give you something to drink? To them you are a problem about to be solved. And to me, you are the Lord. The city scarcely steers, but here come the rulers with you in the midst. Serious faces. Where are they going? To the governor forum? The Romans begin their workday frightfully early, so the council is hurrying, lest they miss their chance for an audience and a quick imperial trial. Go, go, they prude you, they prude you from again, behind. Go down, drag your feet, what's the matter with you? Tired, they themselves are filled with hectic energy. Sleeplessness has nerved them, and their proposes verges and on frenzy go. Jesus, now, Jesus, how do you feel? What are you thinking? You don't talk. Your mouth has been closed for such a long time now. Last night, before the legal machinery caught all of you and began to grind you in its wheels, you said your soul was sorrowful, even into death, and then your eyes revealed the grief. I saw it, but now, in the dawn of your dead day, your face is expressionless. I can read nothing in your eyes. Jesus, my Jesus, how do you feel right now? What moods content within you? What words, what worlds collide inside your soul? Oh, Jesus, are you hating? Are you praying? 
Are you screaming silently? Are you thinking about me now? You walk step by weary step from Jerusalem to Rome, around the world, from life to death, away, away, away from me, away from me knowing into mystery, from my knowing in mystery. Lord Jesus, it terrifies me that you go so far away from me. Please give me a sign. I really can't stand this not knowing. Give me some sign for your solitude, Lord. Please, please that you are thinking of me. Lord Jesus, do you love me now? Wordlessly, Jesus answers. The walking itself is the sign, child. The loneliness which I have chosen and the cross that closes it, these are signs that I love you ever. I have to leave you to love you best. I go where I want you never to go, precisely because I love you. Mark 15, verses 1 to 5. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests, with the elders and scribes, and the whole council held a conversation, and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you? the king of the Jews. And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priest accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate wondered. Things are changing suddenly and then swiftly, but one thing does not change. Look, they've changed the charge against accused. This was the business of their early morning consultation. They needed some charge that the governor would accept as a serious transgression of Roman code. Blasphemy is meaningless to those who don't honor God. And since Pontius Pilate scores the people of his province, He'd ignore eternal squabbling. But they need Pilate's attention because they need Pilate's degree. The death sentence is a jealously guarded right of Rome alone. And that's the thing they will not change. Jesus of Nazareth must be executed. And therefore, the new charge is a capital offense. High treason. Sedition. He wants to make himself a king of the Jews. To the Roman governor, that means he's a leader of the resistance against the emperor, the empire, a zealot. And it works. They get his attention. They get their trial. The proceeding opens with the indictment by the plaintiff, in this case, officials of the Sanhedrin. There follows then an examination by the imperial magistrate, Pontius Pilate. He hears testimony first from the witnesses and then from the accused. And usually this will be enough. And after consulting his legal advisors, Pilate would render a verdict. The sentence to be executed immediately. But things are changing. When Pilate asked the accused, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus gives a qualified answer. You have said so. Eventually, they define the title king. Differently, and Pilate is forced to return to the plaintiff for further interrogation. But things are changing with terrible speed. When Pilate questions them a second time, 
The chief priests blow up with these blizzards of accusations, many things. And suddenly, the first charge of treason is wakened in Pilate's estimate. He perceives that the real cause of the chief priest's complaint is envy. So the prisoner's word now carries more weight than it had had therefore. And Pilate returns to question Jesus a second time. But whereas the chief priest rose up in noise, Jesus has descended into silence. And precisely when his word would be strongest to save himself, he offers no word at all. Have you no answers to make? The governor asks, marveling at the man. Look how many charges they bring against you. No. No answer. Rather a resolute, dignified calm, which in fact inclines Pilate in his favor. For the fanatics of his province are acting fanatical again, displaying the qualities he despises, but this remains unruffled. Things are changing. Pilate is contemplating a verdict of innocence. The chief priests feel the wind turns against them. They need a new tactic. But with you, O oh Lord, one thing never changed. Ironically, you and your accusers had to self-game go. And by your very silence, steadfastly, you went as it was written of you. Human beings, strategized, human evil sent you to your cross. But something huger hovered over the occasion. Something of your own volition. Love. beautiful people I don't want to say much more on this because God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son may he bless your day hearing all these words you heard And I hope that you feel love. Let the beloved love you and bless you in your day and your loved ones, as well as your brothers and sisters. And may you find peace within, my dear ones. A warm Lenten blessings again to you. And let Christ comfort you. Blessings. This is your Pastor Yeti. Bye.